Are human beings, and perhaps all mammals, hardwired to help others? In other words, in a variation of the age-old nature versus nurture debate, are we taught to show empathy for others, or is there a biological basis for helping behavior? Profound questions, not ones that most people would think rats could help answer, but that is exactly what scientists at the University of Chicago are using with some thought-provoking results. Here to tell us more is Peggy Mason, professor in the Department of Neurobiology at the University of Chicago, whose work focuses on the biological basis of empathy and helping behavior. Professor, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. First of all, uh, this whole area of inquiry into the nature of empathy and helping, why did you decide to focus on that? I, I, it, the idea came from a graduate student. And I, I'm open to graduate students, and I was so lucky as to have a really smart graduate student in Bal Benami Bartal. And she was working with Jean Decidi, a, a colleague of mine. So the three of us decided to hook up to answer this question. Once we started, in very short time, this became so fascinating. And I, we just jumped in. And, and at, at that time, when, when I started, I actually was looking at pain modulation for a living. Uh, I dropped the pain modulation because this is more fun than it should be legal. All right. Well, we have some video of some of your experiments. Yep. We're going to roll some. Yep. And please tell us what we're watching and what the significance of it okay, great. is in your mind. So okay, so this is, this is the setup. And there's a rat that's trapped in that tube. And there's a rat that's in the outside. The rat that's trapped can't open the door for himself. The rat on the outside has to. And he does. And it, it's okay, so he does it once, who cares? But we do this for 12 days and he does it repeatedly. Okay, this one is different because the rat inside is different. What's the rat going on? inside is a different type of rat. It's a black caped rat, whereas the rat on the outside is an albino. But they've lived together, so they're, they're uh, comp compadres, so to speak. And so he opens for the for, for his cage mate just as well. And so, but before the, uh, I, I, you've done another experiment, I think we've got So some we have another experiment where if they've never seen a black cape rat, they the white, will, the albino. if the albino rat has never seen a black cape rat, he will not open for the black cape rat. But uh, say he's, he's been so a here, cage. So here we okay. are. So on the left you have the cage, the, I'm sorry, the Sprague Dolly rat, the albino rat has lived with a black caped rat, one, and now he's being tested with a stranger that's black caped, and he helps, no problem. But on the right, what you'll see in a moment is the door is cocked open because the albino rat has completely ignored this rat. He's never met another, uh, he's never met a black caped rat. So he's ignoring him, and eventually we don't want our rats to be, be be depressed, so we let this guy get himself out. He got himself out. The, the, the bino rat didn't care. So now he comes out, and what you'll see in a moment is they'll, they'll interact and, and not in a particularly I love you kind of way. They kind of start fighting. They kind of start fighting, yeah. So, okay, so, 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 so great. So what that basically told us was that environment can say, as long as I met your type, I'm going to be helpful to your type. So I don't have to have, I don't have to have met you as an individual. Exactly. But I must have met but I had to have met an individual like, like you. you. Exactly. Like you. And once right. that happens, I'm willing to let someone like you who I don't know out of the cage. Exactly so. But then so if environment is that powerful, is there anything left over for genetics? That's that was the next question. So we did an experiment which I don't have uh video of, but uh, in the experiment, we basically did a Mowgli experiment, as we called it in the lab. We took... Based on the, uh, the Jungle yes, Book. on the Jungle Book. <laughs> so we took white albino rats, and on day zero, we transferred them over to the black cape rat litter. They grew up in a black cape rat environment the entire time. Probably thinking it was a black cape exactly rat. Exactly so. So then they Didn't grow up... Didn't know it was an albino. They grow up, and they, they are tested with a black cape rat stra stranger and of course they help because that's who they've lived with their whole life. Now they're tested with an albino rat and that's the question, what will they do? And the answer is they don't help because even though that's their biological genetic type, they've never met them. Not willing to help. So what are the, what are the potential lessons you can extrapolate to mammals 
including humans. Exactly. So I, I find this very exciting. I think that our one of our biggest challenges in, in society today is a lack of social cohesion, a lack of, of the ability to work together. And one of the biggest factors in determining social cohesion is helping each other. If you've helped me, if I've helped you, it makes a group more socially cohesive. So what this tells us is that biology is contributing to that helpful behavior. If the rats will do it, we have that same biological inheritance as the rats have. We're mammals, just like they are. And the biological portion of it is what? That uh, mammals have evolved to know that to if we act as a group, our chances of surviving are better? The mammals have evolved to respond to another's distress by helping trying to help another out of distress. And that's a really powerful message. And it suggests that as we try and attack society's really intractable problem of getting along, that biology should be at the table. And I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a chauvinist for biology, for neurobiology in particular. But even so, um, I, I, don't, I would admit that neurobiology does not have all the answers but I certainly believe that we deserve a, a seat at the table. Professor Mason, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. We appreciate it. Great. And how well do you know your brain? You can visit our website for seven brain facts and take a quiz to test your knowledge. Back to wrap things up right after this.